Hey everyone, in the news this week, the actor James Earl Jones passed away, presumably now referred to as James Earl Bones. And to be fair, I recently we watched Star Wars and his breathing did sound really bad back then, he must have been ill. It's also the two year anniversary of the death of Queen Elizabeth and I was thinking back to that day and how I spent most of it checking my phone for poor taste jokes from friends. And it's funny now with hindsight to realise that Hugh Edwards is doing exactly the same when he wasn't announcing the news of her death. He was also checking his phone every few minutes, albeit for very different reasons. But then there was also the presidential debate between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, which, as always, was rather a waste of time. Two people reading out pre-prepared lies for well over an hour. It's like watching a couple at a dinner party going for a nasty divorce, except at least then you might get a beef wellington or a risotto out of it. I did find it hilarious how the organisers had done their hardest to only fact-check Kamala and thus give her the edge, but then literally the only soundbite or news to come out of any of this was the whole thing about how Haitian migrants in Springfield are higher are stealing and eating the pets. As a reminder, the way that this argument works, by the way, is stage one, no one is eating anyone's pets. And stage two, why do you care so much if people are eating the pets? Then in October, the newspapers will run an article saying why eating pets is a good thing. Then eventually there'll be adverts stating, quote, refusing to eat pets is equal to white supremacy. Hashtag vote Kamala. I did get a chuckle out of a satirical piece by the Babylon Bee on this subject about how a local Chinese restaurant had been forced to close due to the lack of available animals to pass off as sesame chicken. And in most respects, I think the story is partially true, albeit it's wildly overblown. But it's kind of irrelevant. Nobody changed their minds on who to vote for her based on this. And that's probably still true after they try to get Taylor Swift to endorse Kamala Harris. My personal reaction to that is probably just to remind everyone that 90% of Taylor Swift's songs are about how she's a terrible judge at character and always picks the wrong person. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.